in the previous class uh, we were uh, discussing regarding the different methods of uh, industrial wastewater treatment in that we have already covered regarding the volume reduction and the strength reduction how we can uh, treat the industrial wastewater by volume and the strength reduction that we have discussed in the previous class now in today's class we are uh, going to discuss regarding how the industrial wastewater can be treated by using different methods called as an neutralization proportioning and the equalization these three methods we are going to discuss regarding these three in detail in the today's class and also uh, we will be studying regarding how the inorganic solids if it is there in the industrial wastewater how it can be treated or how it can be removed that we are going to study in today's class so now we were we are going to discuss regarding the neutralization as we know that uh, the pH scale, right? I think uh, we, uh, you people know what is a pH. pH is nothing but the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. So this pH imparts is uh, imparts the acidity or basicity to the water. Okay. Now if the pH of a solution, if it is in between zero to seven, right? We call it as an acid. Seven we call it as a neutral, right? Seven we call it as a neutral and from 7 to 14 we call it as an base now how we can treat the industrial wastewater by the neutralization method now for example if acid if your industrial wastewater it is going to be acidic right how we can neutralize this particular acidic ranges by adding the base to it then it will the ph will be coming to the neutral stage for example if your um, uh, base is going to, if the industrial wastewater is going to have the base that is alkaline in nature then how we can reduce is this particular basic nature that is in uh, it is in the alkaline uh, state how we can reduce is we are going to reduce this basicity by adding the acids so overall what we are going to do is if the industrial wastewater is going to have the acids then we are going to add the base to it and we are going to bring it to the neutral state okay then if your industrial wastewater is going to have the base right then basicity then we are going to add the acid acid to it and then we are going to make it neutral so this is what we are exactly going to follow in the neutralization method okay now we are going to discuss regarding what are the different methods that are available in the neutralization method now excessive acid or excessive alkaline waste should not be discharged without giving the any kind of a treatment into the receiving stream okay a stream even in the lowest classification that is one classification for the disposal or industrial navig uh, navigation is adversely affected by high and the low pH values right if you are going to use uh, if you are going to have this uh, stream where we are going to use the uh, water from that then extremely low and extremely high pH is going to be get affected okay this adverse condition is going to be critical when sudden slugs or acids or uh, alkalis are going to be imposed on the stream now how we can uh, reduce these uh, the different uh, methods uh, or how we can reduce this higher acidity higher basicity that we will be seeing now mixing of the waste right the first one is the mixing of the waste so that the net effect is going to be nearly neutral okay we are going to mix the different ph solutions and then we are going to reduce the its concentration next is passing acid through the base okay the passing acids to the uh, uh, through the beds uh, through the beds of limestone or the through the bases that we can reduce then mixing the acid waste with the lime okay so that both the concentration is going to be get reduced now uh, adding compressed co2 to the alkaline water all right and uh, producing co2 in alkaline uh, waste right these are the different methods or uh, uh, ways in order to have the neutralization effect now the first thing that we are going to do in the neutralization is the mixing of the waste right and this can be accomplished within a plant operation and between the neighbor, industrial neighbor the acids and alkaline when they are going to be mixed right here what will happen their ultimate effect is going to be get reduced okay now next is the mixing with the limestone treatment now when uh, limestone treatment when we are going to do is when the acidic wastewater is uh, going to be get released now 
then what we are going to do is in order to reduce the strength of the acid right since the limestone is uh, having the basic characteristics we are going to pass this uh, particular acidic wastewater into the limestone so that the acidic nature of the limestone is, uh, of the acids is going to be get neutralized with the help of limestone now for example calcium carbonate is going to be mixed with h2so4 so that it is going to produce caso4 and h2co3 so uh, this is going to be done uh, this is an, just an example that how we can reduce the concentration of the uh, uh, concentration of the acids okay so this is of the one of the method then again we are going to use a lime slurry for treatment of the of the waste again here also what we are going to do is again the we are going to reduce the strength of the acids by adding the lime slurry to it since lime is having the basic in basicity in nature and acid is going to acidic in nature now we are going to mix them with each other and we are going to reduce the strength of the acids now the caustic soda treatment for this acidic waste okay so again this is again it is going to have the same base okay if the acids are there then we are going to add the bases if the waste water is basic in nature then we are going to add the acids so all these neutralization what we are going to have is we are going to either add acid to the or to the base or we are going to add base to the acids so the ultimate effect of those acidic or the basic solutions is going to be get reduced so this is what we are going to do in the case of neutralization now next is we are going to discuss regarding the proportioning okay now we will see what is proportioning right proportioning means the discharge of industrial waste in proportion to the flow of the municipal sewage so that the ultimate effect of the acid or the basic water is going to be get reduced okay now why we are going to have this particular uh, proportioning the main objective of a proportioning is to right uh, in sewer is to keep the constant percentage of industrial waste with the domestic sewage flow entering into the municipal treatment plant okay now this can be done by this is going to be uh, done due uh, why we are going to do is right to protect the municipal sewage treatment plant to protect the biological devices right uh, from the shock loads of industrial waste since it is going to have the acidic or uh, the basic in nature right as you know that the microbial activity is going to be get affected if it is having uh, too much acidic also it is going to be get affected the microbial activity and if the too much base also uh, it is going to be affected you uh, this is what in order to prevent the biological activity in the putrefication or uh, in order in the treatment process so in order to prevent that we will be doing the proportioning okay now how we can do this particular proportioning is right we are whatever the waste we are going to get it get from the industrial waste we are going to hold uh, that particular time and then with, ha with the, having the controllable speed or with the, the pump we are going to mix it with the other solution and then we are going to do the proportioning and then we are going to discharge it to the receiving water body or we are going to discharge it to the uh, sewage right sewer lines now how we, we can do this proportioning by the two methods one is by the manual control and one the automatic control right now how we are going to do the manual control is it in it involves the determining the flow pattern of the domestic right as well as we will be determining the domestic flow first how the domestic and the industrial waste how it flows and then it, we are going to record the flow of the sewage and the flow of the domestic waste water and we are going to record it and then uh, manually we are going to the flow rate of the industrial waste water and uh, the manual and the domestic waste water we are going to control it manually and then we are going to discharge okay so this is how we are uh, going to uh, give the industrial waste to the streams okay next is manually the automatically in this case the sewage which is going to be flow involves the placing a device which records right which which is wherever the industrial wastewater it flows right what we are going to do is we are going to place a device which is going to record the amount of wastewater flow in the sewer line as well as from the industries and then the device it is going to translate the rate of flow of a sewer to the recorder so that 
the from the industry wherever the industrial waste water is there it is going to uh, record it and then accordingly what we are going to do is we are going to liberate the industrial waste water to the receiving water body and uh, next is we are going to have we are going to the next process is the equalization right the next process is equalization now what is equalization is as the name is indicating it is a method of retaining the waste in a basin right so that the effluent is fairly it is going to be discharged is fairly uniform in the sanitary characteristics so uh, it is going to match with the help of ph color turbidity right and then all these it should match and then we are going to discharge now in the equalization what we are going to do is whatever the waste water that we are going to give it to the receiving water body we are not directly even immediately after its production we are not going to discharge we are going to place it into one particular tank right and uh, uh, we are we will be uh, uh, we will be discharging it into the receiving water body when the ph color and turbidity alkalinity is going to be fairly uniform okay now uh, the significant if, uh, effect of uh, this particular uh, equalization is that the lowering con concentration of the effluent contaminants that we need to manage okay then the size and the shape of the basin vary with the quantity of waste pattern and the discharge from the factory the most basins are rectangular or square whatever the holding tank we are going to be provided it is has to be the circle it has to be rectangular or square and the capacity should be adequate to hold the and render the homogeneous right homogeneous it, it should have the homogeneous mixture okay now the holding of the waste is uh, the holding of the waste is going to be very very important so it should uh, provide the uh, uniform uh, uniform mixing of the waste should be taken place now uh, this can be done by the proper distribution of the baffle wall right the, it, it can be done by proper distribution of the baffle wall and uh, by baffling now horizontal distribution right it is going to be maintained by using by the several units such as the inlet pipe spaced at a rectangular uh, the horizontal tank that we are going to provide and then uh, the baffling as will be done now as we know why we are going to do the baffling is in order to reduce the flow velocity and the having the proper mixing right if we do the if we provide the baffling wall right what we are going to have is we are going to reduce the velocity and the proper mixing can be done right then a mechanical agitation right it is the most need need for the baffles and it is going to provide the better mixing right agitate operated it is uh, the agitator ag agitator should be operated at the speed of around 15 rpm for the with having the capacity of 3 hp now again the aeration also we can have the equalization aeration is nothing but the we are going to insert the external air in the water and again we can reduce the concentration of the ph and we can uh, have the equalization process now the next process is we will be studying how we can remove the inorganic dissolved solids now as we know the industrial wastewater will be having the inorganic elements since it is going to involve the chemicals in it the chemicals such as the chloride phosphate right my and uh, again uh, it is going to have the certain uh, the metals right all these will be there uh, in the industrial wastewater that we we need to remove it now we can remove these inorganic dissolved solids by means of evaporation dialysis ion exchange algae reverse osmosis by all these methods we can remove the inorganic solids from the industrial wastewater as we know right when uh, the evaporation is nothing but after boiling the industrial wastewater right the water is going to be get evaporated and after getting it uh, after it is going to be get evaporate and if we are going to condense it that water will be free from the solids and the solids will be remained in the container okay so this is uh, whatever the water we it is going to be get evaporated right whatever the water which is going to be get evaporated we are going to get condensed this water and we are going to get the pure water now what remains in the container the solids will be remaining in the container so this is how we are we can remove the inorganic solids from the water then uh, dialysis right the next method is 
the dialysis. Dialysis, uh, I think, uh, uh, that it is a separation of the solutes by means of their unequal diffusion through the membrane. Okay. Now here, as you know, right? As uh, you know that dialysis, we are going to use a membrane. Now when we pass the waste water from such particular membrane, this particular membrane will be having the pores inside it and these inorganic solids which are present in the waste water, it is going to be get arrested into these membranes and we are going to get the water which is free from the solids at the other end. All, already this you know, right, how we can uh, use the dialysis method. Next is we will be studying regarding the ion exchange capacity right as you know that in the case of your hardness you have already studied regarding hardness how the uh, your zeolite process is going to remove the ions right the ion exchange it is uh, the it is a basic process of exchanging the undesirable cations and the anions from the wastewater for the sodium and the hydrogen ions okay now in the case of it is old originally it has been developed in case of your hardness now the, we have seen how the calcium and the magnesium carbonates and the bicarbonates have been removed by the zeolite bed the zeolite bed it is going to absorb the calcium and the magnesium after uh, from the water after some time the zeolite beds have to be regenerated re rejuvenated when the bed gets exhausted and it is going to have the backwashed and it is it has to be backwashed with the help of the sodium chloride okay as you know that whenever the calcium and the magnesium are there this can be removed by using the zeolite right which you have already studied in the previous semester next is the algae okay the algae it is uh, it is, uh, it, is it, it requires the nine mineral essential minerals right uh, so which is going to have ferrous manganese right silica zinc right and barium right uh, and seven major elements such as carbon nitrogen pota potassium right sulfur right for its optimum growth the use of algae for removal of minerals is still it is in the experimental process okay now next is the reverse osmosis next method is the reverse osmosis as you know what is reverse osmosis is nothing but it is the method of passing the industrial waste water through the semi permeable membrane under the with, uh, under the help of the osmotic pressure right when we are going to pass the water through the semi permeable membrane what will happen that semi permeable membrane it is going to arrest the inorganic salts which are present in the industrial waste water and it is going to release the water uh, it is going to release the water which is free from the inorganic solids now already you know this regarding your uh, reverse osmosis the reverse osmosis is going to have the semi permeable membrane the industrial waste water will be fed through this and then what will happen this semi permeable membrane is going to have the pores inside it and it is going to these inorganic solids it is going to be get arrested in these pores and are the and then the waste water is going to be passed through this particular container through the or under the osmotic pressure and this is going to have the this side we are going to have the waste water which is going to be free from the inorganic solids so this is what we have discussed in today's class so in today's class we have discussed regarding what are the different methods of the industrial wastewater treatment that is a neutralization equalization proportioning and also we have studied regarding how the industrial wastewater which is going to have some of the inorganic solids can be removed by using the dialysis ion exchange right and then um, your reverse osmosis boiling how we can do it so this is what we have discussed in today's class thank you